Hello there! Welcome to this presentation explaining the basics of amplitude shift keying, as well as to give examples and for the applications of it. But first, let's talk about the basics of amplitude shift keying. So when we say amplitude shift keying, it is the digital to analog conversion technique. It's like solving a math problem using calculator turns into an abacus. Easy, right? But by definition, the amplitude of carrier signal varies with respect to the amplitude of message signal. Let's try to understand this. For example, we have input signal M of T that goes to our multiplier together with our carrier signal C of T which is equal to omega t. And as a product of these two, we have amplitude shift keying output. Now, let's see this m of t, that is our digital signal in terms of binary number, ones and zeros. For example, m of t is equal to 10101. And the value of m of t will be multiplied into our carrier signal, c of t. Then it will be generated the output amplitude shift key. To illustrate this, we have m of t equals to 10101 and our carrier signal c of t. Then, there we are able to generate ASK signal as a product of m of t and c of t. The output will be carrier signal f1 and zero if input is zero. So first, one carrier signal, zero, zero, one carrier signal, zero for zero, and another one for carrier signal. Based on this, we can justify that the amplitude of carrier signal varies with respect to the amplitude of message signal. In this case, for binary where n is equals to 1 and when n is equals to 1 it is also referred as binary as keying or binary amplitude shift keying or for another term on off keying or OOK. For the second part it is bandwidth of amplitude shift keying. We already discussed on how to get ASK output. It is the product of m of t and c of t, which equals to m of t cosine omega of t. So the bandwidth of ASK signal is directly proportional to the bulb rate of the message signal. And the proportionality constant is 1 plus t. So bandwidth is equals to 1 plus d multiplied by r. Also, r is equals to r over n when bandwidth is equals to 1 plus d quantity r over n. Now, for our final formula, bandwidth is equals to 1 plus d quantity r over n where small r is equals to bald rate and big letter r is equals to data rate while n is equals to number of bits required for sample and d is equals to the factor for modulation of filtering process. While for the range of rd, d is either 0 or 1. But for ideal modulation, d is equals to 0, and that means bandwidth is equals to r. While for worst modulation, d is equals to 1, and the bandwidth is equals to 2r. We already know that the product of message signal and carrier signal generates the ASK output, where the input signal M of T comes in terms of binary numbers, ones and zeros, where one gives us positive voltage and zero for no voltage. Then, next to our fourth part, 
the demodulation of ASK signal. The demodulation can be categorized into two methods. One is the synchronous method, and synchronous means coherent. And the second one is non-synchronous method, which means non-coherent. First, let's talk about synchronous method. For example, the modulated signal we receive is m of t cosine of omega t. It then multiplies to our carrier signal cosine of omega t. Then the product will be m of t cosine squared of omega t. Then the product will be passed to our low pass filter to get the original message signal of m of t. But there are advantages and and disadvantages for this method. This method is efficient, but most likely, it is expensive. While in non-synchronous method, we pass this modulated ASK signal M of T cosine omega T through our analog detector to generate our message to our original signal. Again, there is still an advantage and disadvantage for this method. Where in this method is a low cost value, but performance is poor with less SNR received signal. This includes our presentation. Thanks for watching.